Hello ho ho! I'll get that right at some point. And welcome back to The Library Is Open. So I hope you brought your Sleigh Bell Library cards. But um, Why am I like a dodgy uncle at a wedding in these intros? It's a pattern I've noticed. <laughs> I hope you're all doing really well. Um, welcome back to the, um, the final episode of 2020. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> which um you know uh, you in which you find me dressed in my my PJs and my my dressing gown which feels singularly appropriate I think for this time of year it's you know it's cozy time it's reading by the fire so on and so forth it's absolutely not just pure laziness I swear <laughs> um yeah so um I am going to be, after this video, I'm going to be taking a break over the Christmas period, um, the holiday period, I should say, uh, and then coming back to you bright and bursting with books in 2021. Uh, that's just because, um, you know, giving, given what this year has been like and, you know, me wanting to sort of claw some time back work-wise as well and stuff like that, I'm really going to be spending the Christmas period just with the fam bubbling and... Um, yeah, I just thought it'd be nice to take some time away and then come back all fresh and ref fresh <laughs> and rejuvenated, fingers crossed, hopefully for you. So, uh, so that's the plan anyway, and I don't want you to get sick of me, of course, that too. Um, so yeah, it seems really appropriate to finish this year out, uh, given that it's this time of year, with a sort of kind of festive themed book in... Well, it's not really festive per se, although it does touch on festive uh, issues. I suppose that really depends, doesn't it? But um, it's uh, this particular title, this gorgeous title, Hidden Thief by Gregory Maguire. Um, I spoke about this briefly in my 12 Reads of Christmas, but I just want to pay tribute again to this beautiful cover. Look at that. And this is uh, subtitled A Tale of the Once and Future Nutcracker. So this is my sort of... I sort of promised myself, um, although I've got quite a few festive books, like one festive book that I really wanted to just read this this holiday season and and um, and revel in, <clears throat> as it were. And being as the the Nutcracker is, I think I mentioned this before, is my favourite festive story of all time, uh, which I think goes back to when I was like younger, and we used to get this um, like cartoon version from the video shop. Remember them? Um, you know, we used to go in and borrow a VHS tape, and sometimes you could borrow a video recorder as well if you didn't have one. And I always used to go, um, uh, get that one. I think, in fact, I bought it on VHS when they were selling off from the shop. But, anyway. So, um, this is, this is by Gregory Maguire. Oh, I should say, shouldn't I? If you don't know the story of the Nutcracker, basically, it's, um, a folktale about a young girl called Clara who's given a nutcracker by her godfather, uh, Uncle Drosselmeyer. And uh, the nutcracker basically comes to life and has a battle with the Mouse King, who's threatening to take over the uh, the kingdom. And um, it's all just sort of beautiful, like, toy, sweetie, festive magic. And obviously there's the ballet with the Sugar Plum Fairies and all of that. It's like, it's a well-worn title in terms of, you know, pop culture. But... Uh, yeah, this is by Gregory Maguire, who famously wrote the uh, the Wicked series, one of which obviously was adapted into the Broadway West End hit Wicked. Um, he also has four, uh, three follow-ups to that, Son of a Witch, A Lion Among Men, and Out of Oz. And he's also got um, loads of books that use traditional fairy tales as their basis. So, for instance, he's written After Alice, which is a Wonderland novel, uh, Confessions of an Ugly Stepsister, Cinderella, Mirror Mirror, Lost, uh, A Wild Winter Swan, which I think is the the Twelve Dancing Princesses, maybe, or something. Hmm. Should have checked my facts on that, but I didn't. But anyway, that's pretty much his shtick. Um, oh no, he's got a brilliant one as well, because you know how much I love Charles Dickens. He's got one called What the Dickens for young children, about, well, younger children, um, about a rogue tooth fairy, which is fab. Um, so that's his shtick, basically. He takes well-loved tales and sort of explores them for adults, primarily, um, which is what I really, really like about him. I remember reading Wicked for the first time um, and being sort of, in some ways, quite shocked about the adult 
the level of adult content in it. Um, I guess in terms of bad language and, you know, and sexual scenes and so on and so forth. This doesn't have that, but it is still very adult in tone. But it's much quieter, which I think works for a winter book in the sense that it is... Um, I don't know, I always think of winter as a season of longing and reflection and sort of wistfulness. And that needn't be a negative thing, by the way. Um, but, you know, there's a ponderous quality to winter, isn't there, that just sort of seems to suit the season. Um, so, yeah, I should tell you what happens in this then. So this concerns a young boy who is a foundling, um, who is called Dirk. And he lives with an old man or an old and an old woman in a wood. Um, and basically, they, they live this sort of very sheltered life away from any other element of civilization. And then it transpires that the old man and the old woman are not able to keep him anymore. So they sort of hit on this quite Hansel and Gretel-y idea of, of killing the boy. <laughs> Told you it was a bit gruesome. Um, and they take him into the woods. Um, and what actually happens is... Uh, Dirk ends up chopping a tree and injuring the old man by accident and then the tree falls on Dirk and he dies but then he comes back to life but um, he's lost an eye basically so he has an eye patch which is famously um, in all adaptations of the Nutcracker Uncle Drosselmeyer has a spoiler has um, um, an eye patch it's like one of his distinguishing features Anyway, so he sort of goes, I don't want to say he goes on the run because he's not actively running from anywhere. He's just sort of looking for purpose. And he ends up with this minister who sends him on a message that takes him on a journey to this sort of rich household where he meets this young man called Fritz, who's like a friend of the wealthy family there. And um, later he ends up becoming apprentice to a paper merchant and getting involved. I don't mean physically or anything like that, but emotionally with the papermaker's wife, who um, is from Persia originally and has sort of underlying emotional issues um, that lead her to go to a doctor mesmerist who um, she keeps talking about this uh, young child who it transpires is her younger self and so on and so forth. Um, and she's really inspired by uh, to trigger her memories. I know it sounds odd, but it makes sense um, by walnuts and like the, the symbolism of walnuts anyway so um dirk undertakes to become her protector and the protector of her two children while the merchants away and then fritz the wealthy friend comes back into his life and there's like a like a sort of free on there of um i don't know what it is they have a strange and complicated relationship that sort of never becomes anything more than it is but could have done you know and um yeah, so from there, this, his sort of path um, becomes one of trying to find a way to, to reconcile what happened to him when he almost died, um, or rather did die and came back because he had this vision of um, what is thought to be Pythia and Pan from Greek mythology. He's very eclectic, Gregory Maguire, I will say that, but it all does kind of work. In, in the context of this, and um, he ends up um, becoming a, a toy maker, which is, you know, how he eventually comes to craft the Nutcracker, which then goes on to become the gift that is given to his goddaughter, Clara, I won't tell you how we get there, um, and then sets off the events of the Nutcracker, you know. Um, this is just beautiful um, in in its, as I said before, its wistfulness and its ponderous nature. It's perfectly suited to the winter climate. It What it manages to, I mentioned their Greek mythology, but it manages to weave in so many traditions of like folklore and mythology um, in a way that feels almost musical but is not overwritten you know sometimes i think when we talk about like musical prose or whatever um there's an element of it being a little bit purple and a little bit sort of you know overwritten but this is very spare text that still manages to find beauty in it um so it's um yeah it fe it feels very much like a sort of 
what would I call it, like an anthology of um, half remembered stories and, and various beliefs that intersect. There's stuff about like uh, German romanticism in there and music and uh, mystery cults where, you know, there was the sort of big thing at the time of, um, you know, a fascination with death and the afterlife and so on and so forth. Um, you know, it's, it's really, really sort of, it reminded me a little bit in some respects in the way that it manages to blend all those elements. So this is going to be a weird comparison, but it makes sense in my head. Um, it reminded me a little bit of, um, Tom Stoppard's play, Arcadia, which sort of is my favourite play, so of, so of, Cockney, um, which sort of um, manages to blend, um, you know, philosophical ideas and things about music, mathematics and literature and uh, gardening. Honestly, trust me, it's brilliant and it's hilarious as well. Um, into Into a narrative that really sort of speaks to I guess humanity really, um, and how to um, sort of find the warmth in the coldest of seasons. But again, it's not done in that kind of calculated way by by Gregory Maguire because he doesn't sort of go in for happy endings per se it's not an unhappy ending it's just an ending and you never feel like sort of manipulated even with a, a book that is you know essentially a christmas text if you will you never feel manipulated into that sort of all's well with the world it's not the words of the carol um you know you never get that impression um for a moment so you know it just sort of works beautifully it's like a symphony i suppose of of ideas and emotions i'm coming out with it today aren't it if the prose in this is not purple then the prose in what i'm saying certainly is to match my dress and go home but yeah i really enjoyed this i sort of sped through it quite quickly i was anticipating it would take quite a while because i remembered um wicked taking a while because of the complexity of the world um which I suppose makes sense because I think The Wizard of Oz is probably a better known property in some respects than The Nutcracker, even though it's a lot newer. It's um, so the, you know, Gregory Maguire had a lot to do there in building the world of Oz the way that he wanted it to operate, um, which is much darker than the MGM um, version and also darker than the original L. Frank Baum version. Fun fact, um, the lead character in uh, Wicked, Alphaba, the Wicked Witch of the West, um, was named Alphaba because of the initials of the author of The Wizard of Oz, L. Frank Baum, Alphaba. Nothing to do with this novel, but I think it's contextually interesting. Um, so yeah, I was kind of, um, in some respects, I was kind of anticipating that I'd still be reading this in the run-up to the actual, the big day, if you will, but I got through it a lot quicker, and I think that really speaks to how readable um, Gregory Maguire makes his novels because there's because it's fantasy I'm trying to think how to phrase this properly because it's fantasy as well sometimes you can it can tip into so much exposition about the world that you you fall into like fantasy writing like writ large in terms of you know, we're given loads of concepts that we have to understand in order to appreciate what's going on with the magic. And it has to be technically or scientifically or at least, um, you know, explained in some way that makes sense with the logic of the world. But this doesn't do that. This is um, when things happen that may or may not have supernatural origin or so on and so forth. Um it's just it just happens and we accept it because of the the deceptive simplicity of the storytelling i suppose is the way to say it um there's um there's some cracking characters in here uh the relationship between fritz and not fritz sorry um the <laughs> was it fritz see i only read this the other day and i can't remember um 
Felix, sorry, Felix, I said it wrong earlier, it's not Fritz, it's Felix. The, the relationship between Dirk and Felix is particularly interesting because it's it sort of borders on queer rep, I suppose, in the sense that there is a palpable sense of sexual tension between the characters, but they never quite come out and say it, they allude to it a lot, and there's a scene in a barn which is, you know, PG-13. Um, but... And it's a shame because what it sort of speaks to is the way that Dirk sort of moves through this novel constantly on the cusp of love and affection but never quite able to to get there which I think is a lot about why um, he ultimately becomes this toy maker though I'm not sure the character would describe it in that way but it's that that ability through that to give and display affection without it becoming sort of messy and, and human or whatever. Um, there's also a wonderful, uh, the character, the, the mesmerist doctor, who is sort of very old and um, tries to convince Dirk that he experienced a sort of afterlife experience and then came back and, and that was really interesting in terms of how like the emerging schools of like psychology and, and, and hypnosis and things were coming out at the time. Um, this really sort of rich cultural landscape. Um, the the character of uh, the uh, paper merchant's wife as well, I think it's Nastaran. Yeah, who Dirk is sort of in love with, but not really, not sexually or anything like that. Um, is also fascinating in terms of the... Um, the sort of blending of like Persian mythology and you know Bavarian German uh, mythology in this um, and how you know I suppose it sounds like a really weird concept but just in terms of how we sort of have this idea that people from different like cultures mythologies in the past didn't like mix or have an awareness of one another and actually that's not true is it it's like society was as varied and as mixed then as it is now it's just maybe not the the popular tale that we're told. She's she's a really interesting character in terms of her sort of uh, just her pervasive presence throughout the book. Um, she sort of represents, I think, a a lot of how Dirk sees himself in the way that she's kind of cut off from a childhood that she wants to reclaim, whereas he has a childhood that he never had. So. It's like he's constantly searching for something through interactions with other people, but he'll never know when he's got it because he never experienced it first time round, which is quite tragic, but also really quite beautiful. Um, so yeah, there we go. I sort of, I'm, I feel like I'm going off on tangents now. I've been lured by the, the, the sleigh bells in the wind or something to, to just talk about all sorts of esoteric subjects and stuff but well that's all right it's been a year hasn't it 2020 has indeed been a year so yeah if you're looking for a mythology inspired uh festive story that doesn't overdo it on the schmaltz i would definitely recommend uh hidden the and in fact all gregory Maguire's works because i think they're all brilliant but then i do like that you know folktale mythology we, you know this you know me uh, so there we go, that's that one. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, so I guess that's it for this uh, this year of 2020. Um, on the library is open, put your library card somewhere safe and make sure it's very safe, in fact, because you won't be using it again until the new year. So don't let it get lost behind the sideboard or, you know, stuffed under a vegan cheese board. That'd be awful. Um... <laughs> But I just want to take this opportunity to thank you all so much for sharing this year with me. This channel's been a joy and I love our interactions both in the comments and on other social medias. Um, which, uh, you can find me on Twitter if you don't know, at Stuart, A-R-T, in capital letters, uh, Crowther. And on Instagram, at Creeping My Asthma, uh, all small letters which I share with that reprobate my asthma. Um, so, you know, c come and interact with me there as well. I post a lot about books and things that I'm reading, even if I'm not doing videos on them, so it's really, really nice. Um, 
so yeah, it just it just behoves me now to wish you all, whatever you are celebrating, a very happy uh, festive season. Um, it's going to be weird this year for us all, isn't it? But I hope that one way or another we can still find a way to be warm, merry and as bright as possible. And above all else, to keep ourselves safe and... Um, I was going to say tidy then, and that doesn't make sense at all. Good to know some things don't change, isn't it? But the very best of Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, winter solstice, every other holiday you can imagine. Love to you all, and I'll see you in 2021. Mwah.